<laughs> right. How to hook up your door to Masturbator 5.1.1, okay, or to your DL device, your Mackie uh, digital mixer, okay. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, let me just quickly bring this up here. So I use Reason. Obviously, you can see I got GarageBand. Uh, I've got a, another door, uh, but Reason's my main uh, door. The reason why I like Reason with most things, it's plug and play, very straightforward. Uh, with other device doors, you have to sort of, you know, do a few things to get things up and running. So I've got a mic plugged into channel one on my mixer, and straight away here within Reason, it's there. If I select, uh, here we go, channel one input. Um, now how I achieve this is as soon as I've plugged my uh, mixer, my my mixer, my USB port for my mixer into my laptop, come into preferences, and with any door, go into audio, you get to pick what audio device you want. Um, so in this case, I've got my DL32 there, and these are a few other audio uh, USB devices I've used in the past, uh, but obviously it's on the Mackie DL32. So. Once it's in there, I can uh, select whether or not I want it in mono or in stereo. Um, the only reason why I'm mentioning this is when you put it in stereo, you'll see that it'll pre, uh, pre-fill these out and it'll pre-link the stereo channels for you. Now, one thing that's important for you to note is this pre-linking that's being done here by Reason is not Reason's choice. When Mackie built this desk, uh, they set it up in such a way that you can only link one to two. You can't do two to three. You can only do three to four. You can't do four to five. Same thing with the outputs. Um, there are ten on this particular one here. And you can link one to two, but you can't link two to three, and you can link three to four, etc. So this is down to the actual device itself, as opposed to anything that Reason is forcing onto the device. Uh, obviously, in this case, I've just got uh, channel one, and that's going into my door. Now, in order for somebody to listen to what's happening within the door, say you've got a drummer coming to track drums or whatever the case may be, if they want to hear what's happening within the door, uh, you have to change something within the routing to allow for that to happen. So by default, let me just make sure that this is definitely, yeah, it's recording. So by default, uh, what Master Fader have done is they have set everything up uh, to work the way it should, really. And they've set everything up to work in such a way that if you plug anything into um, XLR1, it will uh, feed into AUX1 on the DL30. Well, I use DL32, but you might have a 16 um, or an R. 32R, I've got an S. Um, you know, you might have the 1608, whatever. So long as you're using Master Fader 5.1 or 5 or 5.1.1, uh, I'm demoing this on 5.1.1. Uh, it'll be fine for you. Uh, but it comes as default this way. And obviously this method is good because it allows the musicians to monitor their own mix using their own device. They can change whatever levels they want and make those adjustments themselves. But they can't currently hear what's happening within the door. So if they have to play along to something that's happening within the door, uh, they need to be able to hear that sound. And this is where the trick comes in. It's not really a trick. It's, it's, <laughs> it's how it's meant to be, really. Um, USB 1 and 2 is what's used, uh, or is it, those are the channels that are used to uh, send something uh, in and out of your uh, Mackie device uh, via USB. So if you have mono, so I've got some Behringer P1Ms personal monitors uh, hooked up, and those are all mono. So if you've got them all in mono, you can link them all to either uh, one USB 1, or you can link them all to USB 2. Uh, they will play for you, no problem at all, okay? If you have them in stereo, then you hook up one to USB 1 and one to USB 2. I think one becomes your left and two becomes your right, and that's how it works. So because it's designed to use USB 1 and 2, you can't start hooking them up to <laughs> USB 3, 4, 5, and 6 and expect to get sound. Uh, the way it works is it's through USB 1 and 2. 
Oh, so that's what you're looking to uh, to do. So as long as you hook them up appropriately, as I mentioned, mono, one, one or two, uh, and then obviously stereo, you can have one and two, three and four, five and six, because this is the way in which Mackie have rooted this within this desk. Uh, you can't have three and four, uh, sorry, two and three, because Mackie haven't allowed for that to, to work that way. So just bear that in mind. Uh, but yeah, as long as you hook it up appropriately, uh, whoever's listening to uh, the mix through the door will be able to, uh, I'm opening up something else, they'll be able to hear what's happening within the door. So if you've got a metronome going uh, and they need to be able to hear that that click or that pre-count before it comes in, etc., uh, they'll then be able to hear that. They'll be able to hear anything else that you've uh, recorded previously, just as if you would be monitoring it yourself uh, through uh, through a mix. So, you know, if you had plugged your headphones, sorry, directly into the laptop, and this saves you from having to constantly keep shifting your, you know, your headphones, okay, back into the laptop or the desktop, take them out and plug them into the, um, you know, to the, to the mixer and plug them to the preamp, and it saves you from having to do that, because once you're done, um, you know, you, you want to go back to utilizing the, uh, the mix on the, the actual device itself, just route everything back here appropriately for the channels that you're using and you'll they'll be able to then hear themselves through the actual device and use their you know their tablets their phones to monitor their own mixing and the reason why I say that is when you have it hooked up in such a way that everybody's going to USB 1 or and 2 here yeah there's no way of uh, sending a separate mix back to say the drummer and sending a separate mix back to, uh, you know, that specific backing vocalist, and sending a separate mix to the bass guitarist, etc. But when you're doing a recording, I mean, <laughs> ideally that's not necessarily the case, in the sense that, um, you know, you're not you're not trying to. <coughs> how can I put it? Uh, you you can you can record them separately. You can sort of chop it up, mix and match what goes where, who goes when, uh, etc. Uh, you don't have to have that kind of a situation where everybody's listening to uh, their own mix. Um, it's slightly different when you're doing recordings. But, you know, do what's best for you. Set it up the way you want it to be. Um, and, and, and that should work for you. Um, so, yeah, just bear that in mind. Um, and, yeah, that's how you uh, hook everything up. Any further questions, feel free to come back in the comments. And I'll catch you guys in another video. All right.